This is the camera system that I usually use in my home studio. It is a rather nice Sony ZV-E10 with, from Sigma, a 60mm f1.4 lens attached to the front of it. Very pretty it is too, but sometimes, for various reasons, I'd like to have the flexibility of using my iPhone as my camera. And that's really easy. Technically, the Mac has for a while had a feature called Continuity Camera, where either wirelessly or wired, you can connect up your iPhone to your Mac to use it as a camera in Teams and Zoom and so on. But the challenge has always been, how do you mount the camera in a way that frames the lens to compose you nicely in a shot? And you can just hold it, but it'd be a bit wibbly wobbly. There are now a few adapters out there in the market that you can buy, and I got one of them for Christmas. This one from Belkin. Now Belkin makes a second one which is a bit slimmer, designed for laptops. This one's a bit chunkier, designed for desktops. It also has a quarter 20 thread on the base here to allow you to connect it up to a tripod. The nice thing about this is, I'm looking at you in this camera over here, but my main screen's actually off to the right, so if I put this up here, the phone connects to it magnetically. So all I have to do is take my phone, clip it into place, and now I can see the view from my phone looking back towards me. And it's all right. It's not as good quality as my Sony camera, but it is fine. Um, the interesting thing that I noticed about that, the reason I'm making this video is when I first put it on, the magnetic system, MagSafe, isn't um, orientated, so it doesn't click on straight. But watch what happens if I tilt this. You see, the image doesn't um, change in orientation, but it crops in. And that's because presumably either the Mac or more likely the iPhone is using the iPhone's gyroscopic data to know where level is. So <laughs> however I twist that, it's going to the image is going to be maintained straight, <laughs> but it'll crop in because it's having to deal with the fact that you don't have as much image around it, which is kind of cute, right? Kind of interesting. But the reason I realised that was because when I first set it up, I realised that the lines, the horizontal lines behind me weren't entirely straight. And the reason for that, is, and so I tried to like adjust the camera to make them adjust and they wouldn't, they'd stay the same, so it's, it's adjusting. But, for somebody as anal as me, this is lovely, because if I angle this forwards, I can see the air further forwards than that. Not as far forward as that. I can see the edge of my desk in frame. And so I know that my monitor is not square to my desk and I need to adjust it a little like that. And now, because this is square and that's always straight because of the gyro, I know that my monitor is now square on my desk. Which is very pleasing. And actually the picture's fine. One thing I will say that's also notable, I didn't know about the uh, the fake bokeh stuff that the iPhone does. Is It doesn't just blur the background, it blurs the background like an actual lens would. So flicking back to this camera over here, my Sony, if I bring something into shot, watch what happens to the background. The closer my hand gets to the frame, the more blurry the background gets. And that's something to do with how light, how light is coming into the lens and being focused on the receiving plate, the sensor in this case behind it. The iPhone does the same thing with this fake. So if I turn off this fake blurry background like that, that's what the camera actually sees, right? But if I turn it on, it's using depth data from the LiDAR scanner at the back of the camera to work out what's me and what's the background and then cut me out and do the background. It's not perfect. If you pay a lot of attention around my beard, you see some fuzziness. That's not just my beard. But, same thing, if I bring something into focus, the background pushes more out of focus the closer my hand gets. It's actually replicating the physics. It's completely fake, it's doing that itself, but it's replicating the physics of an actual wide aperture lens. It's quite charming.